The Al Kebula Revivalist Movement presents Africa Speaks to Al Kebula on Galaxy Radio 102.5 FM and GalaxyAsiwi.com, the only deep brainwashing station. Weekly discussion and live debate on all issues affecting the African community at home and abroad. Tune in Monday, 8 to 10 p.m. and have your say as we talk it straight and make it play. It's live, it's hot, it's scintillating, it's real. It's Africa Speaks to Val Kebulan on Galaxy Radio, the only deep brainwashing station. Tendam Wari, Tendam Wari, Tendam Wari, Kings and Queens, you are in tune to Africa Speaks with Al Kebalan on the one and only Galaxy Radio, the only deep brain washing station. As usual, Kings and Queens, Africa Speaks is known and renowned for keeping its finger on the pulse of the African community, addressing the most pertinent issues which some radio stations just won't touch. So keep it locked in, locked on to the Big G Galaxy Radio for the next two hours as we can continue to talk it straight and make it plain i know many of you are locked in ready to receive our international guest sister zaza ali all the way from the united states of america one of the guests that will be uh, joining us for the pan-african congress movement ald observances and celebrations kings and queens uh, in birmingham this year and we shall be addressing the subject matter of science of self what what do Africans need to do to liberate ourselves, kings and queens? Do stay tuned, locked in, locked on. Our sister is ready and rearing to go. And as I know you are. As usual, kings and queens, we get started off with one or two tune to get us in the vibration for the show this evening so stay tuned and we'll come back to you with some community announcements you know as per usual after these messages ten down worry africa 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 must be free, Africa must unite, total liberation for the continent now. Africa, Africa, Africa must be free, Africa must unite, total liberation for the continent now. Total liberation for the continent now. Total liberation for the continent now. In the land where I've always been. Yes, indeed, kings and queens. Uh, Africa Liberation Day theme music. I've taken the sweat. Sounds like thing called uh, the African Dawn. Africa might be. Tune called Africa must be free. Oh, You'd be surprised how much people that love, you know, Africa, love Pan Africanism and all these things and don't listen to no motherland music, you know. Africa yeah, man, you have to listen to some motherland music inside, Zane. Okay, kings and queens, as we take this one down, take this one down, take this one down. As we, you, usual, we give you a few community announcements and these things before we get into the veg of the show, so to speak. First and foremost, kings and queens, we're going to give thanks to Auntie Jean uh, and the entire African culture market family for hosting a fantastic, beautiful uh, and wonderful African culture market down there in Croydon. For the first time in Croydon, kings and queens, it took place uh yesterday you know what i'm saying um shout out to vasco stevens and uh a, a number of brothers and sisters who were uh, who spoke vasco stevens spoke on the the importance of uh uh, uh the the prostate, that's, the, that's it, the prostate gland, you know what I mean? Prostate health, say prostate health and all these things. Um, yeah, so that was a, a fantastic presentation. We had a brother that was speaking on uh, spiritual healing. I forget his name, but he, he began speaking about Reiki and then he moved into his own spiritual system that he developed, that he uh, is, div not spiritual system, healing system, that he's developed energy uh, manipulation system 
called Ashe Oshumari, yeah, developing and making sure that our, you know, our healing systems are African centered, and I appreciated that, kings and queens, you know what I'm saying? Um, so, yeah, a number of our presentations, big up to Stella and Nat Nye, you know what I mean, who, as usual, were the hosts of the uh, day, you know what I'm saying? Beautiful uh, event down there. And shout out to Sister uh, Debbie Aikibi as well. We were able to briefly get down to her um, event. Uh, Bango is called, um, which is uh, in uh, Yoruba, means discount. And yeah, that was a really beautiful event. We only got, to, got caught the tail end of it, you know what I'm saying? But um, African economics is high on the agenda of the community, and many of the young people are taking up the reins in terms of ensuring that we are economically self sufficient, you know what I'm saying? And securing, sorry, I should say, circulating that African pound you know what i mean uh debbie was also featured on rt tv yesterday not yesterday a couple of days ago um licking back against certain insults that were taking place at cambridge university and did a very excellent 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 job you know what i mean so yeah give time to all the works that are going on we had uh shakara speaks on friday just gone kings and queens friday was shakara speaks and it was the subject was African centered education, the breakdown, the breakdown for African centered education. I want to thank all those who came down to that, including the teachers. In fact, I should say, especially the teachers who came down to share that with I and I. It was very, very, you know, uh, well received uh, what I had to break down, and I, and I give thanks for that. And it's just the start of the works that are to come, so we appreciate that also. We continue this Friday coming. Um, sorry, not this Friday coming. Next Friday, the 29th of uh, May, Kings and Queens. Not the 29th of May. Friday, the 27th of May, where we will be dealing with information, the breakdown at our normal session. As you know, it's been all about the Queen Bee, uh, Beyonce, you know what I'm saying, since January, having released formation, performed at the, stu at the Super Bowl and upset some white folks. Um, and then uh, she released um, her vi visual album, a video album called Lemonade. They've, and all, both of these videos have a number of allusions to black pride, you know, political activism, uh, African spirituality and whatever else like that. So we're going to be breaking down the language and symbolism of Lemonade um, on Friday, the 27th of May. And also we're going to be dealing with um, th what this means in terms of the ascendancy of African art kings and queens african art in this day and age yeah because many are heralding beyonce as standing at the forefront of the black arts revolution you know what i'm saying revolutionary art in this day and age kings and queens and we're going to be exploring whether that is whether she's earned that title or not um and whether, whether or not she has earned it, what this means in terms of black art and revolutionary art in general, you know what I mean? Because many have also criticized her for basically placating the movement for capitalist gain also. So we're going to be exploring the extent to which that is true. And there are also some other little issues going on in um, Formation and Lemonade that uh, is worthy of our exploration, in particular to do with our relationships, our black male-female relationships, kings and queens. So once again, that is Friday, the 27th of May, down there at Mama Africa Culture Shop, um, 282 High Road, Leighton, E10, 5PW, kings and queens. Once again, Mama Africa Culture Shop, 282 High Road, Leighton, E10, 5 P W. All information for this event and very much more can be found at the Al Kebulan website A L K E B U L A N dot org. Once again, that's A L K E B U L A N dot org. Kings and queens okay so check out our website for all information required um and there's enough information there about the al Kebla revivalist movement in general and the programs that we run and so on and so forth so do stay tuned for more information and even the new look al org website yes indeed kings and queens we are on uh, the move 
Later, later on, we're going to give you an update in terms of the interim National African People's Parliament General People's Assembly coming up for June. Um, and yes, we are here, Kings and Queens, for Africa Speaks with our Kebulan just getting our sister Zaza on the line very, 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 very shortly. I know she's ready and rearing to go, okay, Kings and Queens? So for now, do log the all important studio and interactive lines once again. Text line, first and foremost, because the lines are not open straight away. They'll be open a little bit later on. The text line is 07-489-538-784. Once again, that's zero. I forget, Nicariah, seven officer, O, you know, call O a letter and zero a number. So zero seven four eight nine five three eight seven eight four log the studio calling numbers from now but don't call them now call them when i say that the lines are open oh seven nine two three double three four five one five alternatively oh seven three nine nine three five nine six one four kings and queens you can also message us on the twitter al keb at al kebulan move once again kings and queens. i'm saying this now you know, because i know say there's enough inter outer national listeners locked in right about now to hear our sister zaza ali so you can get us on the twitter at al kebulan a l k e b u L A N move as in M O V E, yeah, on the Twitter, you done know. Um, and you can also leave a comment on our website page, Africa Speaks tab, and we shall be sure to read it out, kings and queens, yeah. Our Kebalan, search our Kebalan move or our Kebalan way on any form of social media, and you will be sure to find us. We're getting our sister Zaza Ali established and ready to come forward right about now kings and queens so stay locked in locked on and we'll be back after this tune ten nine more already all right all right brothers and sisters so um we're gonna go into our show right about now um, and yes, um, you'll be hearing from my sister shortly. Before so, as usual, let me just give uh, the usual introductions. Our show title this evening is Science of Self. What do Africans need to do to liberate ourselves? Tendam Wari. The theme of the Africa Liberation Day event organized by the Pan-African Congress Movement on the 29th and 30th of May this year is Africa in the world today. Check alkebalan.org for information details for A A Africa Liberation Day. There are certainly many ways to discern the subject. One might, one might be to look at available statistics. For example, the World Bank Group's World Development Indicators 2015 indicate that Africa has the highest extreme poverty and hunger the lowest rates of universal primary education made least progress during so promoting gender equality and empowerment of women and also the highest child mortality not surprisingly terms like slavery colonialism and even globalization do not appear anywhere in the report these types of outcomes find themselves replicated throughout the African diaspora. The main difference being that Africans here, as in the UK, do not largely, lamentably, deliver primary education. In terms of economic activity, health and gender issues, um, Africans tend to languish at the bottom of the table. For example, although African women in the US of A are most likely to be in the labor force, uh, to the tune of 71% compared to 69% for all women, they are more likely to be unemployed, 10% in comparison to 8% for other women. 
and far more likely to be below the poverty line, as in 29% in comparison to 17%. So the picture, both at home and abroad, is of global oppression. Lesions of prophets and messengers, from Marcus Messiah Garvey to Omawali Malcolm X, Osage for Kwame Nkrumah, to Queen Mama Francis Quest Welsing and beyond have prescribed diagnoses and blackprints for Africans to repel the yoke of oppression, yet it is still to be achieved. Some commentators, like USA-based sister Zaza Ali, who will be one of the contributors to the PACM AOD event, encourages Africans to address some of the internal factors. She asserts that challenging the pernicious forms of white supremacy cannot succeed whilst there is, quote, a war on black women, unquote, that on different levels both by African men, sorry, both African men and women participate in. And while our very consciousness gets commercialized, Sister Zaza advocates the science of self as a starting point to taking control of our being as a foundation to re-establishing the necessary institutions necessary for to render us free and self-determining as a people. So tonight, kings and queens, we ask the question. What do Africans need to do to liberate ourselves? Does the current state of Africans globally render liberation unthinkable? Why have we failed to apply the programs previous prophets, of previous prophets and messengers? Is there really a war on black women? How is consciousness being commercialized? And what is the science of self? I said, kings and queens, our special guest is Sister Zaza Ali. Sister Zaza Ali, are you with us? Peace, King. I am here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Greetings and thank you for joining us once again. Um, just in case you didn't hear me over the music earlier, my name is Brother Shakara. For you and all the listeners locked in, locked on, I realize I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning of the show. But we, it is our pleasure to host you, my sister, and we look forward to your contributions at AOD. In fact, that may be a good place to start because there's a little bit of panicking going on <laughs> uh, via some members of our Africa UK community um, in relation to your presence at AOD. So let's confirm what, what your presence will be and your involvement will be in AOD this, this year, just to clear all confusion. Okay, yes, sir. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me on the show and peace to all of your listeners, peace to your staff there and uh, peace to all of the family in the UK as well as across Europe, in the motherland and across the world. Um, I We had some semantics uh, as far as me being physically present that we weren't able to get done with the short time frame uh, that we were trying to set up my uh, being a part of the event. So in lieu of that, I am going to speak as I was originally planned to, but I will be doing it via uh, video. Okay. So I will not be physically present, but I will be spiritually and mentally in the house. And uh, I'm praying, you know, uh, sending out the best of my positive energy um, and my mind to make sure that I say something that can contribute to everything that's going to be said by the great brothers and sisters uh, that will be there. Most definitely. All right. So that's why well, it's, it's good that we're able to connect, connect with you in one way, shape or form. We give thanks for technology. And although yeah. it's unfortunate you won't be here physically, I'm sure that we will have the opportunity to interact with you uh, none, nonetheless. You know? So give thanks once again, my sister. Um, for your presence and your work um, to get right into the show yeah let's get right into into the thick of matters as you know the question that we are asking is what do Africans need to do to liberate ourselves and we're going to come back to what you speak about in terms of science of, of self in a second by the way brothers and sisters uh, stick a pin right there let me just hope for a moment because uh, you may be uh, you may have realized that I'm, I'm kind of in this there's somebody absent from the studio this evening and sister Kai mama Kai uh, is is unable to be with us but we want to send her our love um and birthday blessings is actually mama kai's birthday uh um, and brother Wally, uncle and Wally, you want to say a word as well Most definitely. Very a woman of the highest repute in our community. We give thanks yes, indeed. for your contributions. As Al Kegel and I, the Al Kegel mm -hmm. Revivalist Movement, 
But as Pan-Africanists, global Pan-Africanists, you're doing a tremendous work for our people. And we give tribute and thanks to you, my sister. Tendamwari. Okay, from, from one African woman warrior back to another, uh, who we have on the line from the United States of America, uh, Los Angeles, I believe. Um, and Sister Zaza, we're really asking what do Africans need to do to liberate ourselves? And I would like to start by um, see, getting a sense from you in terms of uh, adding to what we read out in our show spec this evening or afternoon, as the case may be, where you are. Um, what is your impression and what indicators, social indicators do you look at in order to judge the state of the race, so to speak, the state of African people globally in this day and age? Well, you know, for me, the question and when you, you know, when I was reading through um, what you put on the site as far as the introduction to what we're going to talk about, you know, mm -hmm. that question, um, what do Africans need to do to liberate ourselves? I think the first thing we need to decipher is do we as a people want to be liberated? Yeah, good question. <laughs> what is liberation? Yes. You know, what does it feel like to wake up in the morning and not be confined and limited in a world where your potential is limitless? Mm -hmm. You know, what does it feel like to decide what you want to do with your day? What does it feel like to grow up and having access to the natural resources that are prevalent in Africa? Uh, what does it feel like to be able to live off the land opposed to having to, you know, work a nine to five, you know, for someone who is who is oppressing you? Mm -hmm. So I think um, the question is a very important question. I think the question is more important than the answer, to be honest, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of our people can't even conceive what liberation and freedom actually looks like. You know, you look at the situation in Africa and you have, um, uh, you know, different nations that skin, ble skin bleaching cream is, is prevalent. Yes. You know, you have beautiful, 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 beautiful uh, chocolate and blue black brothers and sisters that are paying money to look like Europeans. What, what can you tell the millions of, 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 of sisters, you know, like little Kim here in the United States? You know, what does liberation look like to someone like that? Mm. When you look in the mirror and you, you know, you are, are completely uh, dissatisfied and disgusted with the way that the creator shaped and formed you. What can you tell a sister like that, you know, about liberation? So I think we have to conceive what does liberation actually look like? You know, for some of our people, they want to go work a nine to five, come home, play PlayStation for two or three hours and then watch you know, uh, um, reality TV for a few hours and, and they're happy Yes, and they're in a state of euphoria. The only state of euphoria is when they're immersed in the matrix or in a fictional world, you mm -hmm. know? So I think that, um, for me, liberation, you know, Oprah Winfrey said one time, she said this and it, this always stood out to me. Freedom is waking up and deciding what to do with your day. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we need to raise the bar on the conversation Yes, of course, we need um, agricultural systems. We need educational systems. We need economic systems. We need a, a large variety of, of infrastructure in order to build a nation within a nation here in, in the United States. And, of course, to rebuild our homeland in Africa, as well as for the, the, the brothers and sisters in, in Europe to build a nation within a nation. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know. I'm read. I'm studying Dr. Jill Pulcrum and she asks in her book, she talks in her, about how when she was young, she was looking around at her family and she was looking at her life and she was like, is this all there is to it? Yeah. I'm just supposed to get a job. I'm supposed to, you know, go to school for 12 years, go to college, get a job, buy a house, get a mortgage with a white picket fence, have two children and a dog. Uh, and that's all that there is to life. And so when I when I initially brought to you the, the concept of the science of self, this is what I'm talking about, elevating the level of conversation and the perspective that we have on ourselves as individuals. Social media has totally magnified the insanity of our people, especially <laughs> in the United States. Yes. You know, so I'm looking at. And I know we're going to get into this when we talk about the war on black women. Mm -hmm. I look at the things, the disrespectful things that people say, not only about me, but just the way that we handle one another in general. Right. You know, there is a real serious conversation that needs to take place about the, the lack of humanity 
that we have and how we talk so much about the system of racism, white supremacy, but we are absolutely emula- emulating that in our behavior every day. So liberation is it's 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 multifaceted. Um, we have to kind of peel back these layers to talk about what that really means in order to even figure out how to conceive it. All right. And, and, and I mean, you, you've, you've given a fantastic uh, introduction there. Um, and I, you, the questions that you asked are very pertinent. But um, going back to our show spec, I mean, as we stated, there, are, there have been a number of brothers and sisters, uh, elders, leaders, guides, prophets and prophetesses who have come and laid out the, the, the groundwork, so to speak. Um, for you know, for for how we go about this development and this liberation, what has been, from your perspective, the main hindrance for us building on that work or seeing it through, fulfilling the the vision and the work of a uh, 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 Marcus Messiah Garvey and Elijah Muhammad, uh, even a uh, uh, Francis Cress Rawson? What's the hindrance? Our people are are mentally and spiritually dead. Mm-hmm. There's no question about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's and it's, this goes back to like how I gave the the example about uh, little Kim, and you know, you look at all of the 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 the, uh, the situations here in the United States, for instance, in hip hop and music and rap videos, and how we portray ourselves to the world. If we could only step back and see, you, you know, uh, we've the, the the system of racism, white supremacy, has built a global empire. Yeah. Looking at urban culture. In black America, Mm -hmm. literally, you can see everyone around the world from Africa to China to uh, different parts of Asia to Australia, everyone around the world emulating our culture. Mm -hmm. And that's the good of it. And that's also the bad of it. So if we could teach and train our people to understand that there is something so magnificent and marvelous, marvelous about you that even at your lowest of low points, the world is emulating you yes it's i think that we're 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 jumping the gun so to speak and and we could talk about francis cress welsing we could talk about marcus garvey uh dr welsing in her book the isis paper which papers which all of us should have in our libraries and i definitely want to let everyone know that i am and have always been an adamant student of hers and i i stand on her legacy as well as her spirit yes Uh, she talked in her book about uh melanin And she talked about uh, the science of melanin and how Europeans are not uh, genetically equipped with a connection to the cosmos. And they lack they lack, excuse me, a neurological the neurological concepts of uh, of harmony, Mm -hmm. of balance, of 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 being in tune with nature. And, And, you know, this is being proven with what they're doing, how they're manipulating the weather, how they're manipulating the atmosphere, genetically yeah. modified food. I mean, the list goes on. Mm-hmm. Um, so for us, it's like, okay, you know, we have to stop reasoning, trying to reason and work with a people who are not capable <laughs> of accepting and embracing the best parts of us. Yes. So yes. then are we capable though? Right. Have we been given the, the uh, genetic and the biological and the psychological uh, beauty and beneficence from the creator in order to be in tune with the planet, Mm -hmm. in order to be in tune with nature. Originally, yes, we were. Mm -hmm. Now we're at war with it because we don't understand who we are. So for me, I think that especially with young children, if we can teach them up, start them young and teach them the importance of things like melanin, the importance of our history, all of the great people that came before us, the importance of unity and the importance of ostracizing and 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 uh, and and uh, repelling negative behavior. Mm -hmm. This is something that we are that we are ignoring right now. There is a lot of things that are taking place inside the black community all around the world. Africa here in particular, you know, Mm -hmm. we've got this big scandal now with Africa Bombada and they're saying that he potentially molested hundreds of children and now you're seeing all of these different videos that people are like oh yeah everybody knew this it's like what do you mean everybody knew this yeah yeah we had a pedophile in our community and nobody said anything because he was prominent in Mm hip-hop hip-hop is more important than our children Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of things that are happening at the at the fiber at the root of of our dysfunction that have to be addressed so mentally and spiritually dead people which means that if that's the case we have to find tools and means to mentally and spiritually resurrect our people 
Some of this is about economics, yes. yes. Some of it's about unity, absolutely. Education, absolutely. But if we're dealing with a mentally and spiritually dead people, they're not. Nobody. They're not checking for Francis Cress Welsing. Mm-hmm. You'd be surprised how many people I meet when I'm on the road that have never even heard of her work. Yes, yes. Mm, so, it, that, which which kind of leads me to an, another question, then, in in the sense of the fact that many people, especially because we're dealing with African Liberation Day, which started in the 1960s, and we, we you know, we who are cons- who consider ourselves or are considered quote unquote conscious or quote unquote pro black or whatever else like that are very very well known for bringing up such names as Francis Cress Wilson and Marcus Garvey and Amos Wilson and Mama Marimba Annie and one of the, the things that people will say to us is well that's that that's irrelevant that's history that ain't got nothing to do with what's going on now yeah um and in the sense of do you think it's important important to maintain those legacies um are they still relevant to now or are people like uh that that are called conscious banging on uh, old drums so to speak that doesn't have any relevance to the present day well it's it's twofold it's absolutely relevant because if we don't know where we come from you know we, we'll never figure out where we're going mm-hmm. uh history elijah muhammad said of all of our research history is most qualified to uh reward us so um and, and and me being an adamant student of history, that's what you know. What what initially sparked my interest in, in having a knowledge of self? It was studying ancient African civilizations, and then you know just ancient civilizations in general. Um, so you know me being a student of history and looking back, and we can talk about the well known brothers and sisters, the Marimba Anis, the Francis Cress Welsings, the Sojourner Truths, uh, Queen Mother Moore, and we can also talk about all of those unknown brothers and sisters yes, who yes. will never know their names. Mm-hmm. We'll never know, you know, the small in, in, you know, uh, inadequate, if you will, or, or minuscule things that they did, um, just in living their lives. Mm-hmm. You know, I think about women living in slave shacks and having to have an overseer come into her, into her, into her private space and, and rape her mm-hmm. constantly. Mm-hmm. And and having children by this person that she had to love and those children going off and be so and being sold off into slavery by someone who repeated that cycle. Yes. You know, I feel a debt of gratitude for that. Mm-hmm. I feel a debt of gratitude for those mothers and those fathers who jumped off of those slave ships. I feel a debt of grat- a debt of gratitude for the kings and queens that that paved the way for us. So um, we absolutely owe a debt of gratitude. Now, the flip side of that is. Uh, There are people amongst us who are living vicariously through Africa 10,000 years ago. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah, I get what you mean. Break break it down, though, sis. Break it down. (laughs) (laughs) They're living vicariously through uh, what we did and who we were, and they are completely abandoning and neglecting the condition of what we what we're dealing with right now. And so I've told people, you know, you look at the, the greatness of Kemet, for instance, um, you know, and they say, well, we have to go back to what, you know, Kemet did. We have to go back to, you know, we got to go back and study what's what's inscribed on the on the tombs and on the pyramids. And I say, OK, you're right. We do need to have that that information. But what did what was Kemet's remedy for crack cocaine? Yeah. What was Kemet's remedy for genetically modified food and chemtrails and geoengineering and HARP? Mm -hmm, What was mm -hmm. chemtrails remedy for vaccinations? Mm -hmm. Here we have, you know, Europeans all throughout Africa poisoning our women and our children. Mm -hmm. What was the remedy? So then it's like, you know, it's it's we have to take that information and cultivate it in a language where it becomes relevant today and then stop being scared to stand on our square right now and start thinking outside of the box and thinking from a perspective of here we are today. I'm not afraid to say, okay, Imhotep was the greatest physician, you know, at one point in history and he did all of these things. Well, I want to be the Imhotep of today. Right, right. I want to build I want to be known as one of the greatest builders to ever live uh, on this planet, you know, 500 or, or 5,000 years from today. Mm. That's the mindset that we have to develop. And unfortunately, in the quote unquote conscious community, particularly here in America, um, we're so wound up in, in the salaciousness of reality TV and 24 hour news cycles. And, you know, now there's YouTube wars and beefs and whatnot. And, you know, people are, are looking for drama mm-hmm. opposed to substance. Mm -hmm. So for the people who are listening to me, you have to start gravitating towards the substance and turn the drama off. Yes. 
Mm. All right. So all you reality TV fans, <laughs> all the people then where I watch Scandal and Hollyoaks and EastEnders, you have to turn it off and get into some substance, okay? All right, kings and queens, you can interact with Sister Zaza Ali via the text for now. We will be opening the phone lines a little bit later on. But for now, text in on 07489538. Seven eight four for international listeners. You can text him, but you're gonna have to figure out that international call because I cannot remember it. And um, also, you can get us on the Twitter Al Kebulan A L K E B U L A N dot. Sorry, Al Kebulan move at, on the Twitter, and you can get us on our website Al Kebulan dot org. So, Sister Zaza. You, you've spoken uh, quite eloquently about the mental and spiritual death, yeah? And it sounds like what you're saying to me is that in order for us to really deal with this thing called liberation and liberate ourselves, we need to address this uh, spiritual and mental death. So f- from your perspective, based upon your observances and your work, how, where do, where's the starting point? Where do we, how do we go about addressing this mental and spiritual death? Well, you know, I watched a documentary um, last week. It's called Immortal Path. Mm-hmm. And on this documentary, it's basically a, a, uh, about the Wudong Mountain. Um, forgive me where it's at. I, 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 the name escapes me. Um, yes. It's in Asia. It is a very uh, uh, popular destination for people who are looking to master uh, Kung Fu as well mm-hmm. as cha- Tai Chi. Yes. So, w- Wudong is another way of saying Wu Tang, for those who may not be aware. You know? Okay. Got you. I yeah. didn't know that. I know. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Um, so in this in this documentary, I was very impressed. At the end, there was this master teacher who went and basically lived in in uh, a cave. I think for twenty some odd years, he basically was you know trying to master uh, master himself and master uh, you know his concept of of kung fu as well as uh, tai chi. Mm-hmm. And the government, uh, they were the the uh, Wu Dong was starting to diminish as far as its um, tourism and whatnot and and the the teachers who were available to teach the uh the up-and-coming martial artists so the government sanctioned this man uh and basically offered him a position to train up a new generation of teachers uh so that they could keep the keep the culture keep the history keep the the martial arts alive Mm -hmm. um which i thought was profound in itself you know that's one lesson right there we'll put a put a pin in that lesson um but one of the, the the specifications that this man wanted, he wanted young people who were interested in Kung Fu, who already had a love of, of Kung Fu, but he wanted them to come from impoverished backgrounds. Mm-hmm. That was a qualification. Right, right, right. And so when I, fir- when I first heard it, I was like, oh, okay, you know, early on in the document, I was like, oh, okay, wow, that's really cool. You know, he wants them to be, he's being generous and giving back to, you know, the less fortunate uh, people in the community so that he can, he can help them that may not be able to afford it. But as I watched the documentary, as it got towards the end, I was like, no, it's not about being generous for the sake of helping people who financially aren't able. Mm-hmm. This man understands that coming from a situation in a background of want and need and despair, so to say, cultivates a certain type of mindset right. in a person. And that mindset is a great uh, um, ball of clay, if you will, Mm. to start out to produce a certain type of heart, a certain type of energy, a certain type of motivation, a certain type of spirituality. Mm -hmm. So as I'm I'm thinking about this and then I, you know, I finished watching the documentary, went on with my business day. And then the next couple of days, it really, really stuck with me. And I was like, what if we as a people understood the power in the desperate and impoverished situations that we come from? Mm -hmm. I come from that background. Right. I I didn't grow up with, with, you know, money and from a middle class type family. I didn't grow up with my mother. I didn't even grow up with my father. My father had other people in the family taking care of me. You know, money was was an issue for us. And I can remember very trying times. And so people ask me, you know, well, how did you get to where you are? You know, I I can tell them, you know, I started out in an all black private African center school. And, you know, my father, you know, uh, put me in an elementary school during my most formative years. And I grew up in Oakland and, you know, the Black Panther Party. But when I really, really step back and take and take a real assessment, 
It was growing up and being cultivated in an environment of need and want Mm. and despair at times that gave me the right heart and the right energy and spirit. And it's that same energy and spirit that has the whole world gravitating towards our culture. Yes. It's that same thing. Mm -hmm, So mm -hmm. we have to refine the conversation when we're looking at ourselves and start qualifying our beauty and our greatness and, and our essence, not from the way that Europeans and other ethnicities see us, but the way that we should see ourselves. Mm-hmm. We are a fly people. Most definitely. From the Rastas mm-hmm. to the, you know what I mean? To the, to the black boys and in, in, in across the United States mm-hmm. to the nation of gods and earth mm-hmm. over in the, on the East coast to the, um, comedic brothers and sisters breaking down the sciences of, of Ma'at to, the, the black women wearing their cultural uh, expressions from the afros to the locks to, you know, twists to, you know, the black woman being the mother of civilization. We are a fly, fly people. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't just come from wearing anks and dashikis and kufis. It also comes from how mentally empowered we can be when we really know who we are. Mm-hmm. What was it like to live at a time when the world was ruled by black people? Mm. <laughs> I want to know. Yeah, serious for. Yeah. You know? So, so you know, in going back to, you know, the the concept of of waking our people up. You know, we have to stop, especially young people now. We have to stop trying to marginalize, you know, what they're attracted to. You know, we have to put Young Thug and Kendrick Lamar next to one another and have a real conversation instead of just dismissing them both. Right. What is Young Thug talking about? What does he represent? Okay, well, what is Kendrick Lamar talking about? What does he represent? Yes, indeed. Yes. You know what I mean? Having these conversations with young people because they don't want to be like, they don't know who John Henry Clark is. <laughs> and a lot of them don't, aren't even checking for that. Yeah. But we can introduce them to John Henry Clark through Kendrick Lamar. Yes. We can also say Kendrick Lamar is, you know, on this album, he was, you know, kind of out of whack. But now he's elevated the level of conversation. We have to start using, you know, social media and these different technologies as well as the culture. People say black people in America don't have culture. Mm-hmm. I beg to differ. Yes, yes. I, 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 I'm sorry, but I don't agree with that. Hip hop is our culture. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a we have a, a a a energy and an essence that we move through that comes from being, you know, under the worst oppressive conditions for over 400 years of anybody in the world. Mm-hmm. There's no argument. The people who brought us here were the worst of the savages, the savages of the savages. Yes, yes. You know, but through all of that, that pain and that and that and that oppression has created a beautiful priceless jewel we have to especially those of us who are 25 and above take the diamond rub it brush it off make it shiny make it beautiful and then put it up on a mantle and then show it to our young people and say yes we've been through hell but look what hell has produced yes interesting all right sister zaza give thanks we're gonna come back uh to that point in a second i'm gonna hand you over quickly to our brother omawali who is my co-host in the studio who would like to ask you a question indeed it's been quite a pleasure listening to you uh sister zaza it's uh i can um hear and feel the depth um now you, uh, some of the things you, you, you highlighted was uh, um, in terms of moving from drama to substance, mm-hmm. which I find very interesting in terms of reaching our people. Um, now, particularly in, t- in relation to our young people, what uh, sort of, or do you advocate a kind of a step by step guide to take our people through? And if so, you know, how, how would that, how would that, uh, what would that look like? Well, are you asking in, in, in particular in, as far as our young people? It, particularly our young people, but our people generally who are very much, you know, off the scale when it comes to their focus on Africa liberation, African centered focus. I mean, you gave, you gave the example uh, earlier on of a character like Little Kim. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how do we reach and get such people? back if we can you know what what sort of guidance do you advocate I th- you actually started to to some extent go into it but i just wanted a, a little bit more from you if that's possible 
Indeed, no doubt. Um, and I, that's a great question. Thank you for asking it. You know, I one of the first things that I have to stress, and it's because I'm so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm immersed in this world right now with, you know, um, organizers and, you know, Pan-Africanists and RBGs and all of these different schools of thought of people who have... RBGs? Please, please clarify that. Red, red black, and green, bro. Not, if, not everybody knows what RBGs are. Okay, um, 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 you know, I'm immersed in this culture now where, you know, we have a lot of people who are, who are, are trying to uh, ascribe for liberation for our people. Um, but there is a lack of accountability. And I think that in the first place to start, and I know this, this may sound, you know, people don't want to hear this, 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 this message, but it is extremely important. Um, accountability. First of all, for myself, Zaza Ali, as a before I'm a mother, before I'm a teacher, before I am an advocate, I am the the I have to be the ruler of myself. So there is a there are stages, and I'm growing in my in my in my in my progress, and you know I'm at a very heightened spiritual level right now. Um, what as far as what I am ascribing for, so aspiring, excuse me, not aspiring ascribing so for me diet is critical you know i can't be eating pork and 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 you know uh, all of these different uh poisons in my body and then expect that my mind is going to be clear in order to lead my son as well as to you know raise up a generation of new young uh, of new young girls Mm -hmm. and women um physically i have to be uh at, at my highest or striving to be at my highest um goals and elevate uh, goals of elevation mentally i have to be reading every day i have to be studying every day and i'm not talking about you know um smut reading i'm talking about cultivating a love of history a love of my people and and uh, and understanding this world of racism white supremacy spiritually i have to be ascribing for a better way of life as far as how i treat people how i treat the planet you know it's like we are the mothers of fathers and, of civil, and fathers of civilization. Absolutely. But are we as a people right now in a position mentally and spiritually to give justice to the world? If, in fact, we are the mothers and fathers of civilization. And I know it sounds like I'm, 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 I'm uh, I may be maneuvering your question, but I'm going right to the heart of it. I'm just doing it in a different way than a lot of people do, because I see a serious lack of accountability for, in our leadership in our households, in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and most importantly, with ourselves. So for me, that is the the first thing that I want to emphasize to everyone that's listening. It has to start with you. So you have to be a representation of what you are Absolutely. trying to take our people or, or where you, you want to take our people. Absolutely. Okay. You have to live it. And that doesn't mean we have to be perfect. You know, one of the the, the, the greatest elements of humanity for me is imperfection. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I mm-hmm. tell people all the, the journey, you know, when you're in the thick of it, when you're yeah. in the mud trying to pull yourself out, learn to appreciate that struggle. Um, so that's what I would say as far as as far as us, the the adults, those of us who are, you know, uh, beyond, you know, those immature things that we have to go through as teenagers and young people. Um, as far as our children are concerned, and I would even add martial arts to that, it goes into um, you know the physical aspect. But as far as our children are concerned, the first thing we have to do is have images of our people in our household. Right. That establishes the standard of beauty. So African masks, different comedic culture, uh, the Orishas, uh, uh, different... Um, Uh, Signs and symbols representing African cosmology, different representations of powerful black women and men that have had that have, you know, lived throughout uh, the annals of time, as well as brothers and sisters who are doing work for our people today, known and unknown. Even if it's just an image of a beautiful woman, you know, and her child, we have to have images in our households that represent what we aspire to as far as beauty is concerned. I also feel that uh, reading and, and, and cultivating a knowledge of history and a knowledge of self is extremely important for our children. I also think that we need to give our children a full fledged course on the system of racism, white supremacy. Mm-hmm. We are not arming them for the world that they're going into. 
So we have, we put our children in these schools and the schools are doing, you know, academic wise, our children may be getting good grades, you know, A's, B's, whatever. They look like they're progressing academic wise, but socially they are being destroyed. Psychologically, they are being destroyed. So when I when my son was going to public school when he was young, I told him, I said, look, you know, at like five years old, this is a little world that looks like the bigger world that you're going to be going into. So, of course, you come to me and you tell me everything that's taking place in the school or somebody's messing with you. But I want you to understand, watch how the people treat you from the janitor to the administrator in the in the uh, office, to the lady in the cafeteria, to your teacher. Study everybody and how they treat you. Learn, learn from the, 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 the small things, the little things that are happening in the classroom when they're not listening to you. Look at those things and, and see what type of world that you live in. We have to start preparing our daughters and especially our sons for the world that they're going into and stop trying to sing, you know, this Kumbaya song, Kumbaya song, making it seem like it's all good when it's not. <laughs> but then why do they hate you? That's the real question. Why is it that they are so afraid of you and they hate you? The, there's a book called uh, Breaking Rank by a guy named Norm Stamper. He was a, um, he was a police officer uh, in California, and he, he ended up being one of, the, one of the, the captains, I believe. He was a high-ranking official in the police, off, uh, in the police uh, system down there in Los Angeles, California. And he has a book called, uh, he has a chapter, excuse me, about why white police officers are so afraid of black men. And he talks about how the bigger and the darker the black man is, the more he's, the, the police officer is automatically going to be afraid of him. And when they teach the cadets during, uh, as they're coming up, you know, uh, training for police academy, it's ingrained into the culture as far as the language that they use when they address black men, how to treat them, like they are, they are embedding fear of black men in the police system. And this is across the country. So then I said, you know, and we could look at Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, the fear of genetic annihilation, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which we should, you know, Absolutely. if we taught our sons, well, why is it that they're really afraid of you? Do they really see a thug? Do they really see the N word? Do they really see a low life, you know, inferior, you know, uh, uh, monkey? Or is he really afraid of you because he knows that if you had the same opportunities that he has and the same amount of support from this system, that you would outshine him in every way possible? Yes, sir. Not only that, you could totally genetically annihilate him. That's science and mathematics. So this is another route, another another methodology that we can use to get our children back into being interested in science and mathematics, because, you know, now, you know, they think they're afraid of it, you yeah. know. So helping to our people understand why is it that we're so hated, that we're so feared, because we are so vastly important and powerful and beautiful. We have been kissed by the cosmos as above, so below what's happening you know, hundreds of thousands of feet below, above our heads in, in, in the atmosphere and in space is happening inside of you. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we could go back to the science of self, like I said, with young people and showing them the curl and te the texture of their hair. And those are your antennas. And, you know, we are a sun people and the sun loves us. And as it cultivates and, 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 and penetrates your brain and your scalp, it hits the pineal gland and the pineal gland is, is, uh, is, um, um, uh, releasing uh, highly uh, powerful uh, endorphins and melatonin and things that are that are that are tapping you into the universe. Mm -hmm. We have to find a way, and I know I don't want to sound like I'm you know like I'm in the clouds because I'm not in the clouds. I'm I'm sitting right here on this couch talking to you. I know that I see this in in the in the in the in the least of these in our people. Yeah. We have to find creative ways to give them this information. You know, in the in the immortal path, I'm going to say this and then I'll end with this point. The documentary I was telling you about, they had young look like five and six year old brother, little uh, 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 Asian girls and boys practicing very high forms of martial arts. I mean, they're, 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 the, 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 the way that they were moving their bodies and, you know, and so in tune with their breathing and understanding, tapping into the chi. I was totally amazed 
What if we could create environments like that for our children where they didn't have to worry about racism and violence and teachers at the school picking on them and, and disrespecting them because of their hair and their noses and just give them the creativity to just be free. Yes, yes. This is what we have to do for the, the family there in the UK. And I'm here in Oakland. And if you're listening to me in New York, you have to create those type of environments where our children can come in and let their hair down. And then we can give them the science of themselves so that they can take this world over. Give thanks. Give sis. thanks, Sister Zaza. Um, stay tuned. We'll be back after this brief community information intermission. Al Kebalan presents... Nomo, the informative and uplifting monthly session for the African family. This month, Friday the 27th of May, 2016. Information, the breakdown. A presentation by Tafazwa Shakara Bandaka. The Army, best kept secret, the British blacklist. In recent months, the R&B megastar Beyonce has kicked up a storm with her formation and lemonade releases and performances. In a searing analysis, Shakara addresses, has Beyonce embraced black pride or pimped it? Is lemonade an artistic gift or self-indulgent pop? How should we measure the significance of Beyonce's recent output? Al Kebalan Nomo. Information. The Breakdown by Tafazwa Shakara Bandaka. Friday the 27th of May 2016 at Mama Africa Culture Shop 282 High Road Leighton, London E10 5PW. Doors open 7pm and admission is a mere £3. Under 21s are free. Coming straight from work, don't worry, hot food will be on sale. Books, DVDs and educational materials also on sale. For more information, contact 020-8539-2154 or 0790-8814-152 or alkebulan.org that's A-L-K-E-B-U-L-A-N dot org Al Kebalan Nomo, supported by Galaxy Radio, 102.5 FM, www.galaxyafimi.com, the only de-brainwashing station. Yes, indeed, yes. Yes, indeed, kings and queens, that is in formation. Our next Nomo session, as Sister Zaza was saying, we have to go beyond the drama into the substance so we're going to be looking at what this uh, moment in our black artistic history means kings and queens as beyonce embraced black political activism or has she pimped it among other questions we're going to be looking at it from as balanced a perspective as possible you can check out more information for that particular session which i am very 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 much looking forward to uh on alkebolan dot Org. Um, staying, sticking with Sister Zaza, are you still with us? Yes, sir, I'm here. All right, good, good. Sticking with the, uh, well, I say, I say linking with this particular subject of uh, formation and so on and so forth. Um, going from there into this most important and controversial of questions. I say that because uh, our sister Beyonce has been uh, received by many as a beacon of uh, black woman activism and ascendancy in the last five months or so. So, I'm going to ask you straight up, Sister Zaza, controversially, is there a war on black women? Oh, man. There is absolutely <laughs> <laughs> a war on black women. I am actually uh, highly engulfed in this war at the moment. Um, unfortunately, you know, me being... Um, taking a stand and, and accepting the responsibility of, um, you know, the debt that I feel that I owe from, you know, our sojourn as well as um, just the responsibility that I know that I have, you know, being a wide awake uh, black woman in this moment in time, I find myself, you know, being um, a target, uh, a big target unnecessarily, um, you know, on social media. And, um, you know, it's very unfortunate for me to uh, basically take the stance of accepting the responsibility and um, sacrificing my life, you know, I, I, I really don't have to do this. Um, I could be living that that complacent, you know, comfortable life that we talked about earlier uh, if I wanted to very easily. 
but that's just not my path. Um, and so for me to uh, commit myself to something larger than myself for the greater good and to become a target and to see some of the very vile and disgusting things that our men are saying about me on social media and not just me, you know, um, we could go to Erica Badu, we could, you know, go to um, a lot of the sisters who are out here, you know, uh, trying to do their part, you know, in whatever way that they are. Um, the way that our women are being, um, man, disrespected. And that's just social media. You know, if we look at the reality of the world, I mean, Kenya, <laughs> they sterilized 3.2 million, you know, African women and children in Kenya. And we, you know, we passed around the news uh, article, you know, when it became um, when it was a hot topic, we did the hashtag thing um, and then it kind of died off. You know, it's like, how can we as a people know that there is an open war not only by white, you know, the system of racism, white supremacy, but in our own communities um, and not be vigilant in combating and combating this. But then, you know, claiming that we love, you know, the womb and we love the, you know, the portal from which all life goes through. It is very hypocritical. Um, and I find myself being very upset at the way that, you know, our women are being marginalized intellectually, you know, scholarly. Uh, from a scientific, you know, mathematic perspective, if you will, uh, psychological. I mean, we have geniuses among us mm -hmm. that are not receiving an open platform and not receiving the, the praise and due diligence of our men and our women, too. You know, so we could look at the physical aspect of it if we're talking about vaccinations, if we're talking about, you know, our women being uh, uh, murdered and killed in the streets, um, being beat up, domestic violence. You know, they, the statistic here in America is that somewhere between 60 to 70 percent of black women are being molested before the age of 18 by men in their community that they know. I mean, that, that's astounding. But sis, I, I was going to ask you, you and you kind of answering it in some way, but in, in terms of specificity, I was going to ask, if there's a war on black women, who is the perpetrator of the war? Well, some black women are perpetrating the war. Mm -hmm. Black men are perpetrating, not all black men, but some black men are perpetrating the war. Mm -hmm. And the system of racism, white supremacy. And I would even add that there are different cultures and ethnicities that prey on this, uh, you know, this over sexualized Jezebel uh, figurine that that was born out of slavery in America, right. um, you know, who take advantage of black women. You have you have liquor stores in the black community all across the United States where you have Arabs and uh, different uh, foreigners who come in and set up shop in the black community and then pay young black girls to have sex with them. Yep. And it's a well known. That's, that's been heard of in the UK as well. Yeah, like, you know, I, when I grew up, it was like, we all knew it, you know, and I even found out later some of my friends were doing this, you know, when we got older and they finally told me and I, you know, like, and everybody knows mm -hmm. and nobody says anything, you know, nobody does anything. You know, you have brothers standing outside the liquor store, you know, making their money, selling drugs or whatever. And here it is. You have these foreigners coming into our community and paying our, our daughters for sex. Mm -hmm. All right, sister, we, 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 we've had, we have an inevitable question uh, text in just now from the 671 um, asking you uh, if what are your thoughts on feminism and do you define yourself as a feminist? Well, uh, no, I do not define myself as a feminist. Um, I talk about that actually in book two of Black Matters, Plagues of Dysfunction, uh -huh. um, how it is bewildering to me that black women would assign themselves to a culture and an organization that was born out of oppressing black women. Yeah. <laughs> like eugenics, you know, and Margaret Sanger and Planned Parenthood is intricately connected to feminism. That's yeah. the root of it. And the white women's suffrage, which started out between uh uh, a, a uh, inner conflict between white men and white women. It was never created to include black women or any other women for that matter. Um, now we have ascribed to, you know, this, this concept. And I, I get the point of, you know, standing up for black women and, and women in general, because yes, we live in a world that is, that is very, you know, uh, demeaning towards women. And that is uh, exploiting women every single day. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, how could we, the mothers of civilization, who have a, a, a bigger responsibility than anyone, latch ourselves on to 
you know, these, these concepts, which are half truth, you know, there may be some good concept ideals in it, but then there's a lot of stuff like leaving men out of the picture that I can never understand because I have a son. Mm -hmm. Um, how can we as women, black women ascribe ourselves to, you know, this organization, uh, from our, our children, you know, Europeans are our children. You know, whether we, we, we could look at the different, you know, uh, uh, methodologies from which they came, but that's besides the point. We are the mothers and fathers of civilization. Why can't we build our own organizations? Why can't you create your own version of, quote unquote, feminism that's based on the principles of Ma'at? Mm -hmm. Indeed. Tenemra, my sister, um, I just wanted to, if, if, if you're able to, because you, you spoke personally about some of the attacks that are taking place towards yourself. Mm -hmm. For those of us who are unclear, could, could you just elaborate why uh, have you been attacked on social media? Um, if, if you're able to, Tenemur. Well, one of the things, um, uh, you know, I've had a couple of public um, confrontations, if you will, with some, some, some brothers who may be prominent in the community, and I'm not going to mention their name, at least not right now. Uh, I'm probably going to have to address this uh, pretty soon, and I will. But, um, you know, uh, one of the things is that people are not used to seeing a woman s speak with authority. Mm -hmm. And I know I speak with authority. Um, and at times I can be, you know, raw and uncut, uh, somewhat brash. You know, um, I, I wish that people could understand, you know, when you are when you when you live this, when you eat it, when you breathe it, when you sleep it, you know, and, and, and you are you are literally trying to sound the alarm to wake up people up and let them know, you know, that we are on a, a, a collision. We're headed for a major head on collision. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you can't always be flowery you know, and soft and, you know, and, and I, and I am learning the balance of it and understanding, you know, th that feminine aspect and how you can use that to get the message across. I'm, I'm cultivating all of that. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's times when I, when I can come off kind of raw and uncut. And I think that, you know, people are not used to seeing women, um, conduct themselves that way as well as speak with authority. Um, and I think that that definitely rubs some people the wrong way. Um, I've been very public about my uh, legal issues that I had back in 2010. Um, I fought a case, a legal case with the United States government. Uh, I was uh, indicted on account of uh, mortgage fraud for some stuff that I had did back in the days when I was actually in the mortgage industry um, that caught up to me. And, uh, you know, I had to face that and I, I faced it and, you know, did what I what I needed to do in order to overcome that. Mm -hmm. But I know that that's another uh, that was thrown out in one of the quote unquote beefs that I had. Um, okay. You know, that, that I, it was questioned whether I was, you know, working for the federal government because I had a past uh, with law enforcement, a run in with law enforcement. So um, and then the lies got, you know, told and then retold and then retold. So I had to do a video, which I did and addressed it all and made everything public and, you know, information for people to go back and look at. So I know that that's definitely another aspect of it. Um, I know that, you know, me being physically uh, light skin, you know, the wavy, curly hair, I don't look physically um, the way that people expect for someone who talks the way that I talk and who discusses, you know, the level of, of conversation as far as liberation, revolution, whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, people look at me and they, they, they think, well, you know, you can't be serious just based on the way I look, you know, not understanding my struggle and what I've been through in my life and how much, you know, OK, there's been some benefit to it, but there's also been a lot of pain. Um, and, and, and discomfort that has come from it as well, you know, growing up in a black community and, you know, if you go, you grew up in the hood in the United States, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, if, if you look, you know, like you, like you, weak, like you're weak or like you may be open for attack, you know, people are going to come at you left and right. And they did. Um, and they, they still are. So there's that, that aspect of it. Um, me defending women, you know, it's like, that's taboo you know, right now, um, because black women, you know, a lot of us have issues that we need to address. And some people only want to focus on black women and their issues opposed to focusing on black men and how black men's issues lend to women's issues. So, you know, I think it's that I think it's social media, you know, everybody feeling like, you know, they have an opinion that's just as important as everybody else's. And I think the lack of humanity, you know, when I read some of these comments that people say about me, it's like, you know, I'm a, like my son's 12. 
Mm-hmm. He has access to the Internet. He can go on social media and, and, and do a hashtag Zaza Ali on Google and literally see, you know, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of things, most mostly positive, but some really grimy below the belt type things that are being said about me. Like, what is your responsibility to my son? Yes, sister. If you're quoting M- Amos Wilson on your Facebook page and, you know, you're talking about. Um, these high ordeals of African spirituality and, 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 and concepts. What, like, you know, just that, that core, the core essence of being a human being and being a kind and considerate person, it's being lost on us, and, and social media is totally magnifying it. Absolutely, absolutely. Give facts, we're going we're gonna to stay on this subject for a little while, but we're going to open the lines now, kings and queens. Please do not text into the calling numbers, okay? The texting number is 07489... Five three eight seven eight four. You can call in now <laughs> as somebody is already taking opportunity to do King Absolutely. Kings of Queens on oh yeah. seven nine two three 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 four five one five. Alternatively, oh seven zero. Sorry, zero <laughs> zero seven zero seven three nine nine. Three five nine six one four. You're locked in, locked on to Africa Speaks with Al Kebalan, myself, Shakara, alongside the man in whom CI was sitting in, <laughs> brother Omawale Akwao, and we Indeed. have our sister Zaza Ali on the line from the United States. Of, and, it's, and it's a pleasure of, having you, my sister. Um, so. Zaza, I love this question. Uh, we're we're going to take a call before we get you to answer it. But we have a, 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 somebody who's interacting with us via Facebook, uh, Master John Kanu, asking how important is racial identity in African liberation? So log that question whilst we take this call. Could, from I, could I just quickly say to, to, to Sister Zaza, give, give thanks and praises for sharing that with us. Um, it, it has brought another dimension to your very self, to us as listeners who may not know you as, as, as well as others. So we, we appreciate, as Rastafari, we appreciate and love that, my sister. Give thanks and praises. Tena Mwari. Tena Mwari. All right, we have Brother Kane on the line. Yo, welcome. Yes, Brother Kane. Come true. What do you say? Uh, first, I want to say, yeah, big up the sister. Yeah. 100. You yeah. get I like where she's coming from, especially she's talking about the black man and all the madness the police have got us against us. And everything she said is on point. You know what? I'm from England, UK, you get me? I'm off Jamaica, I've got to leave. But man, like, I've always liked the West Side of America. I don't be really like New York or, or I don't. And some bro, bro, brother Kane, your, your, your phone's cutting in and out, you know, so I beg you, like. Can you hear me now? Yeah, go yeah. ahead, go ahead, go ahead. The first one I talk about the woman, yeah, basically that woman that was speaking. I like where she's coming from. I like a couple of things she said. I like most things she said. She seems very intelligent. She's like a real black woman, and you get me. Blessings to her, 100. And she's from the West, as, as I can tell. She's from West Side. But I've always liked something about the West, and I think it's the melanin because it's more hot there than New York. New York is more like England to a certain extent. And I think that sunlight has got a lot to do with a lot of stuff. And you know what? Me being born in England all my life, I didn't really had that sunlight. So I need, to, I need to get that. But I like what she's talking about still. And I respect where she's coming from. But one thing I wanted to say, just one question I wanted, one question I want to answer. That you, hello, hello. Yeah, we're here, King. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sorry, my brother. What you said about is there a war on the black woman? Most definitely. I've been reading a book from Real Valentine called Wheelie Boom. And it speaks, it speaks about um, the new world, new world order agenda, the name, main agenda in the rap music and in the media and in TV is to turn the man into a woman and turn the man, turn the man into a woman and opposite, so turn a woman into a man yeah. by changing genders. And it always happens at the end, end times of, of, you get me, of society, it happens. And definitely the black woman there. They're trying to um, destroy her by destroying us and making her more masculine and us more feminine. Mm. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that feminism stuff and all of that. So definitely there's a war on the black woman and the black man, but I think it's really more on the black woman, you know, because they want to have kids with that woman, car. They understand that they can be destroyed DNA-wise, you get me? They mm. can be destroyed just by getting, you know, the 
Yes, brother K. I'm, I'm going to have to land you. I can't got another call awaiting, but go ahead. Uh, brother, that's all, that's all I wanted to say. Listen. That's... Give thanks for your contribution, brother Kane. Yeah, and uh, stay listening, locked in, locked on to Africa Speaks with our Kevin and Sister Zaza. Can you hear the calls? I could hear him. Uh, I, I heard certain parts and then he yes. was going out a little yeah, bit. Yeah, his line was a little bit choppy, but as long as you could hear. He was, uh, he was showing a lot of love to you, my sister. Yeah. A lot of love and respect to you. Okay, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. I did catch the, you know, the the difference in the sunlight in California and the impact that it has, and yes. um, the war on women. And he's reading Phil Valentine's uh, "The Wounded Womb." So, yes. I, I, well, you got everything. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of what he said. Thank you so much, brother. I appreciate the love, and um, yeah, thank you for the call. All right, give thanks for that, brother Kane. We got brother Kwame on the line. Uh, Tanamari family. Tanamari. Tanamari, brother Kwame. brother Kwame. Good to hear your voice, my brother. Um, very, very, very well. Uh, and I want to ask uh, the sister that you've got in from the US. Sister, ja- sister Zaza is from the US, yeah. Yeah, the sister, yeah. Um, sister Ali from the US. I want to ask uh, this simple question. I'm reading an article from one of our main sources of information in the UK via the BBC. It's called Where a Weave at Work. Your after hair is unprofessional. That's the headline. Now, do you think that our, as part of this war that has been waged upon black women, and I'm very aware of the war that's been waged, family planning, etc., do you think that incidents like this are allowing our women to conform to white man or Western perception of what black beauty is? And if so, is that good or bad for the uplifting? African women on the global scale. Give thanks for that, brother Kwame. Give thanks for that for that question. There, sister Zaza, you, you got that question, yeah? I did. All I right, did. go ahead. Great question. Um, you know, it's uh, clearly, you know, we we live in a world that is uh, shaping and molding the way that we see ourselves. We see ourselves from a from a European perspective. Um, I want to say that, you know, and I talk about hair weaves in, in my in my book, you know, we have to be careful in in marginalizing the way that women wear their hair and, and necessarily pinpointing them one way or another, because we have to remember, you know, in Kemet, they were wearing wigs and they were wearing different hairstyles that that accentuated their beauty. So there's nothing wrong with accentuating your beauty. The problem comes in when you know, you start off looking like A, you know, organically. And then by the time you finish putting on makeup and hair weave, you look like Z. You know, it's like, okay, you're not accentuating your beauty. You're trying to totally look other than who you really are, like little Kim. Um, so with that being said, of course, we, we, we're we hearing about these different instances uh, constantly where, you know, women are being harassed for, you know, sisters who are wearing natural hairstyles or, are you know, being uh, marginalized in, in corporate environments and even at schools, you know, cr- across the country in the United States, every day it's like, you know, black girl gets handcuffed for wearing Afro puffs, you know, or, you know, this person got fired because she wanted to wear her hair in locks. Um, we can't underscore enough Barack Obama being in office and how much that, that image of seeing a black family in the White House has totally unlifted the ignorance and the savage mindsets of people around the world. <laughs> and, and, you know, we look at them and we see beauty. You know, I see Michelle, I, you know, she's, she is immaculate to me. Like just, I'm not even talking about her, her person and her character. I'm just saying the physical image yes, yes, yes. of that family for us, it is elevating mm-hmm. for them. It is, it is like, you know, a pebble in their shoe because they see what they are not. So all of the different media forums have to continue to cultivate, you know, from Vogue magazine and Elle to, uh, uh, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians, you know, ingraining this standard of beauty in our people. So now, yes, we have women who are aspiring to look like European females so that they can make white people feel comfortable. Of course, Mm -hmm. not only are they aspiring to look like them, but even worse, they're aspiring to act like them. I sat at a table one time I was a I was having a lunch meeting. And my, the person I was waiting for was running late. So I'm listening in on this conversation next to me. It's a sister. And she's talking to two of her white male uh, 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 co-workers. And obviously they're corporate, you know, they're dressed corporate. And she is just disrespecting black men. I mean, like going out of her way to talk about brothers. 
And I keep turning around and I keep looking at her and I, and I'm trying to understand. I mean, but she knows that she's making these white men feel good about themselves by disrespecting black men. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you immerse yourself in that culture, in that corporate environment, uh, you know, whether you're a man or a woman that you are going to have to cater to and appeal to a certain level of the white man and the white man's ego to make them feel comfortable in order to keep your job. Zero seven nine two three 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 four five one five or zero seven three double nine three zero seven three double nine three five nine six one four. Those are the numbers to call, brothers and sisters. You're tuned to Africa Speaks with Al Kebalan on Galaxy One on Two Point Five FM www.galaxy Afiwi.com. Galaxy is the only D brainwashing station. Tenai Mwari. Tenai Mwari. Give thanks for that, brother Omawali. Sister Zaza, um, coming back, some, linking what you just said with something that um, brother Kane said, and I, I know a number of people are going to be thinking in terms of the war on black women. Yeah? Now, I know that a lot of brothers have an uneasy reaction when they hear ter terms like that, especially when uh, brothers ourselves may be implicated in that. And I know many in terms of uh, responding to that would say, well, there's a lot, a lot of brothers do feel attacked, uh, like you were just explaining, by our sisters and the black woman, so to speak. So in the sense of um, what is the, is there, is there a justifi justifiable reason for a terminology such as the war on black men? Um, is that something that's justified or not? But sis, I'm going to ask you to hold that simply because you've got a call. Yeah, so do hold that question With right brother here. Kwame, um, oh, brother Kwame. Brother, brother Bob, sorry, we've got Brother Bob, yeah? Um, but brother Bob? Yes, yes, Brother um, Chakra. Yes, bro. Go ahead. Greetings. Good to hear from you. Say no more, Brother Bob. Go ahead, Brother Bob. Okay, we seem to have lost Brother Bob. Yeah, we've lost him or he's not coming through. Um, Kings and Queens. So, Brother Bob, you can call back. Sister Zaza? Yes, sir. Yeah, did you, did you clock my question there? I did get your okay. question. Go, go ahead. Great Feel free question. to this one. And, and this is what I, you know, this is why, like, we like, when we have these conversations, you know, it's, uh, oh my goodness, there's such a lack of balance. Yeah. We don't know how to use discernment. We don't know how to stick to the subject at hand. Mm. And this is why, you know, on any given day, I'm going to be discussing the war on black women or the war on black men. Right. And I can discuss either one of them, you know, with a fine tooth comb mm -hmm. because, you know, this is, this is what I do. This I'm immersed in, in, in how we got to where we are. So for me, and this is why feminism, you know, for me, um, becomes an issue because, um, and not to say that this is, you know, not all f black women who qualify themselves as feminists, but for the most part, you know, you can't even really deal with and go to the root of the war on black women. If we don't deal with and go to the root on, on of the war on black men right. and vice versa, mm -hmm. they are both very intricately connected. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we looked at, they say, uh, 70 plus percent of households in the, in the, in the, in the black community in America are headed by single black women. Mm -hmm. And then you have the brothers who say, well, the black woman is the problem because she's raising up these effeminized black men who are killing each other and going to jail. You know, it's like, okay, part of that is true. Mm -hmm. But the other part is that the other 50% of that equation is that you're totally ignoring the men who are coming into our households and taking advantage of our women and leaving them alone with children. So we can't just talk about the end result. We have to go to the root of the problem and talk about the issue. Yes, now, uh, for, for us as women, okay, so, you know, you're a woman who got left by a man. You're a single mother now. You're raising a child in a war zone. What happened to the man? What was his background? Did he end up in prison? Did he end up, you know, is he, is, did he quit his job because of child support because they were taking all of his money? Is he strung out on drugs? Was his father in his life? Was his mother mentally and, and physically abusive towards him? Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there's a lot of undercurring things that are happening. And, and it's like all of these hurt people are hurting people. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been hurt by black men. Like, trust me, mm -hmm. <laughs> I got a story. You know what I mean? And it started with my own father. But then when I, when I went back to the root of his pain, the, what his mother did to him, how he was ostracized in his own family and mistreated. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a story Absolutely. behind the, the, the person. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for us as women, it is extremely important. And, and, and this is what, what makes me mad. And it seems like I'm attacking the sisters or being overly critical. 
We are too immersed in the things of this world and we have no clue about what's happening in the background. What's up? What's up? And if you did know what was happening in the background, there's no way that you could sit at a dent at a table with two white men mm. and break down and disrespect our brothers because you understood the systematic war that's waged against them and what's putting them in that situation. Mm. So for black women, we have to understand the 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 elements of elementary school and 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 how they are are putting per, the proverbial knee, needle in the mind of the black boy and taking away his independent and free spirit and you know he knows naturally that he is inclined to be a king but he's sitting in classrooms with lesser than europeans who are telling him that he's a nobody and that he's supposed to be a janitor or that he's supposed to be cleaning up behind somebody for for the rest of his life that he'll never be a lawyer or a doctor or an engineer or a scientist how did he go from that little pure and innocent child to killing someone and being convicted and, and going to jail for the rest of his life? These things are connected. Yes, it doesn't excuse the behavior. It doesn't excuse men in our communities raping our children. And, mm -hmm. you know, but we have a pandemic of, of pedophiles. Yeah. Uh, Baba Baruti in his book, um, Homosexuality and the Feminization of African Males, yeah. he talks about how, according to FBI statistics, there's four million pedophiles in the United States at any given time. Mm -hmm. Four million pedophiles. That's a, whole lot. <laughs> wow. That's a big number right there. Sisters, and then they have Sister Zaza, sorry, sorry to cut you. I, I, I don't mean to, but just, we've got a call. So let me just take the call and we'll come back to you uh, as soon as we can, okay? Sis, sorry, but you was on your flow. Give thanks for that. Um, for that explanation and that breakdown right there. Brother William, you with us? Brother. Yes, King. Can you hear me? Yes, King, I can hear you. Okay, brother, I'm just going to ask a quick question. Yeah. yeah. And to this, is, the, is there a war between the light-skinned black woman and the dark-skinned black woman? Lord, Brother William, you're going on some things. That's another trio. Trio was yeah, more on top of the show already. You're going on some things, Brother William. All right, is that you, Brother William? That's enough. <laughs> yeah, enough for me. Yeah, give yeah. thanks, for, William, your, give thanks for your question, my brother. All right, brother Williams, one stop. That's enough. V That's Van enough. Bangarang Pan Africa speaks with our Um Okay, kings and queens, we're gonna get that question answered. The numbers are zero seven two nine three 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 four five one five. Alternatively, zero seven three nine nine three five nine six one four. Big up to all those who are having problems. Uh, tuning in. Keep trying uh, on the via the, the galaxyafiwi.com or the tuning app and whatever else. Okay, and brothers and sisters, in fact, sisters, because last week you know, we were dealing with the role of, of, uh, of women in African liberation and pure minded Carleen. So we want to hear some woman, you know Indeed. what I'm saying? Some Bro of the Bro sisters, Bro the queens, the goddesses to come in and, and, and call. We want to hear from you as well, especially seeing as we have such a powerful sister on our phone line. Indeed. I'm um Tenamwari, just to remind our listeners, Brother Shakara, also that Sister Zaza, Sister Zaza is going to be sharing with us uh, um, on Africa Liberation Day, yes. organized by the Pan African Congress Movement. I'm not Indeed. too sure what day it is. Hopefully, both days. Yeah, well, we're, we're, we're going to read the details at the end. But of the show. Um, you know, brothers and sisters, um, for those of you who are thinking about going going up to Birmingham. This is another very, very important reason to, to right. come to Africa Liberation Day. Tenamwa, my brother. Tenamwa. We have Brother Bob back. Brother Bob? Yes, yes, brother. Um, Chakra, sorry about that earlier one. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. We can hear you clearly. Right. Um, yeah, I'd like to um, rise with the sister, you know. Um, oh, oh, uh, I, I subscribe to all the um, compliments that was passed on to her. Um, you know, she, she, she posed a question. And she has the answers as well, right there, right there with her. She, she's very, very, um, you know, altogether sister, very together sister. She, she got, she posed a problem and she got some solutions as well. It's just that, um, she got to get the solutions out there. So one of the solutions that she mentioned is that, um, in, in order to have freedom, one has to have, one has to have a regulated life. And she, 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 she suggested that, um, we should use the principles of Marx, uh, which, which would be very helpful. So, um, and she, I, I think she had, I heard a message that she wrote a book. Um, I, would, I would like to say that um, the, 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 the question about freedom, the fact that um, our, our bodies need, need to be um, uh, maintained uh, puts us in a situation where we cannot be totally free in this life. So basically, I, I insist to say, we regulate our life in order to uh, attain a certain amount of freedom, no matter where we are. Now, um, I, 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 I've... I've um, Associated with a, 
program one time, which um, uh, after freedom, through through a regulated principle, and um, the four principles were um, it, it was to uh, have not try not to have any uh, intoxication. That means you don't drink alcohol, you don't gamble, you don't eat, you, don't, you shouldn't eat, you shouldn't meat at all. But I, I, I must I must say that um, if you want to eat chicken or white meat, that that that's on the table. And the greatest one is not to have illicit sex. That means sex outside marriage. Now, I believe, to my um, own um, personal um, understanding, that if you follow those principles, you will attain a certain level of freedom. So, I would like to um, just, um, you know, relate that to, um, to the program and see what this is, see what this is think about it. So thank you very much, yeah? Give thanks, brother Give thanks, brother Bob. All right, so no, no intoxication, no gambling. No pork. No pork and no needless. Uh, intimacy, so to speak. No exactly. pork of any kind. Indeed. We have brother Zakayo. We're still looking for some sisters to call in, you know. 07, 07, sorry. 923 Alternatively, 07399 I don't feel good anywhere where there's no black woman, you know. So I want some black woman <laughs> to call in the show. But for now, we got brother Zakayo. On the line, brother Zakayo. Yes, Tendamari. Tendamari, my brother. Yes, how are you, my brother? We're, we're good. Giving thanks and praises, my brother, to Jabi the Glory. Go ahead, my brother. We give thanks and praise, my brother. Go ahead, bro. To answer the question about uh, what you call, uh, uh, are we uh, lacking our uh, melanin, loving our own melanin? <laughs> From the, the light to the dark skin of sisters or brothers. Yes, it, yes, bro. Go ahead. Uh, it's like this, right? If there is a problem in our community of bleaching and all that, for me, in my perspective, it's, it, yes, I would say yes. Because I love my dark skin woman, right? And I wish to, you know? You see what I'm saying? I wish to have my dark skin woman rather than the light. Despite, okay, I'm light on myself, but I'm not like, I, w- I wouldn't wish to be that light. You know what I mean? Despite, okay, my mom was lighter. She looks like, like what do you call mixed race or something. Mm-hmm. But she's pure African, isn't she? Yes. But when you see my dad or my grands, they have like, you know what I mean? Proper dark light, you know? Yes. Okay. All right, give thanks, give brother thanks, Zakayo. Give thanks. give thanks for that. Brother Zakayo looking for a beautiful dark skinned African woman. If you know him, go and find him. Keep <laughs> in. You know what I mean? You get me? So, yes, that was. Uh, we, we, we take care of bringing the African woman and man together on Af- uh, Africa Speaks. Isn't it, Uncle this Wai? is a multi dimensional program, indeed, uh, brothers indeed. and sisters. So, if you uh, want to take the African opportunity to. Um, all right. To locate that particular yeah, brother, individual, yes, then. Brother Zakayo, leave your number with our calling uh, assistant. <laughs> And we will start it out. We hook you up. We'll hook you up nice and easy, all right? <laughs> yes, indeed, all right. Yes, dating with our cable land. Um, <laughs> the, we have my, my big sister, Oneness, is on the line. One. Ten down, worry, bro. Ten down, worry, big sister, Oneness. Ten down, worry, sister, Oneness. Now, Good to hear your voice. Just, just as a point, uh, sister Zaza, the sister we have on the line, is one of the sisters over here that is doing fantastic work in our community. Um, so it would be beautiful for you both to link up uh, outside of the show across the absolutely. waters absolutely peace to you queen I'm, I'm honored to make your acquaintance uh peace to you sister peace to you sister um yeah I just, I'm, I'm, i'll make it quick i'll make it quick um well i'll try it anyway um, <laughs> our cable and revivalist movement and pick up the show for you know for what you're doing and what you continue to do so i just want to bless you up and bless you for creating a space where people can come and debate and people like can come in and spread her light. So I just want to big you up for that before we even move forward. Give tags. Yes. Um, and yeah, I just, so much of what has been said here today um, has resonated with me and has resonated with um, our spirit. And I know that these are um, the difficult conversations, you know, the difficult conversations. And um, I hope that people listening, you know, maybe the fact that, you know, it's an American accent, do you know what I mean? And a lovely sister breaking it down, maybe it might help people to, you know, listen, listen with an open heart and not feel attacked and all of those kind of emotions that do come up when we talk about healing our community and looking ourselves in the eye 
and making a commitment to do the work that we've got to do. Um, mm. And yeah, like, um, also just big up for everything that you were saying about the African centred education as well. Um, because, and that's something which is important, not just for our young people, because I know we do focus on our young people and how are we going to get our young people to stop doing this, that, that, and the other. But, you know, they didn't fall out of the sky. So we also have to ask ourselves all yes. those questions that we're asking our young people and educate ourselves simultaneously. Yes. Um, yeah. And that's it, really. Um, and I just, just, yeah, big up, carry on doing the wonderful work that you're doing. Um, big up to the people who are doing works who may not be prominent or whatever, but the work is taking place. So I hope that we continue to link up listen to each other with compassion and start healing these wounds. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Give thanks, sister oneness. Give thanks for that contribution there. We're uh, gonna take one more call before we lock off the callers and get get sister Zaza to answer some of these questions and then we close the show. In fact and I prefer if this call was from a sister because I want some more balance on the show, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm feeling kinda I love the masculine energy, you know. It's good <laughs> it's good for brothers to be around brothers. But we need some sister energy. We've been in, we've been in deficit of sister energy on Africa Sweets of our cable for the last couple of shows, Uncle Wiley. Is that so? Yeah, so that's that's not a, a positive thing. And plus, Mama Kaya is not here. Seen, so seen. we need some more sister energy. All right, you know well, I mean? I'll go back to where I came from. No, that's, that's, that's <laughs> not even that, you know, you're welcome anytime. Can I, you know, can I, on the subject of women, can I, just, true, can I just quickly big up woman on the hill? Tinder Murray, sister woman on the hill. Indeed. So, I, I just want to big her up. All right, we have a caller on the line. We're not quite sure who's we're going to get. Kola, are you there? Kola, are you there? Hello? Greetings. Can, you, can I ask to please turn down your radio? All right. Okay. Is that, is that much better? It is. Who's speaking, please? Oh, hello. Good evening, Galaxy. Good evening. What's your name, please, sis? It's Lady Bass. Lady Bass. I uh, just want to say to the lady in the studio, oh, a fantastic show. But, but you see... Even when she's talking about businesses, you know, that you have to, you know, you have to grow your hair or you have to, you know, cut your locks, you know, to be able to get, you know, get a job or something like that. But that has been going on for century years. I mean, so if my sister in the studio, I mean, Beyonce is going through it. Um, 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 even Michael Marcus, um, Michael Gavin went through it. Michael Jackson went through it. Um, 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 Naomi Campbell went through it. So it's like fighting your way through businesses, you, you know, no matter where you are, no matter what businesses you're doing, but the color of your skin as well, you know, it's not that uh, easy to just ignore. It, it's impossible. So it depends uh, how you look at it, you know, in the well, the way how you see yourself. But at the end of the day, it's about being yourself and loving yourself, but you shouldn't worry about what well, what they're thinking. You know, you know. If you don't like the job, you just have to keep searching. Give tax much. Say, yeah. say your name for me one more time, my sister. Hold you back. It's just about. It's just the way nature is because it is so simple. It's very simple to love, but at the end of the day, we are all on one planet and we are all over the world. Black is beautiful. Beautiful. God know what He was doing when He created black and white. Yes. You understand what I mean? So that is just the way it is. It's about getting along and understanding one another and respect. Indeed, my sister. Okay. Say, say your name for me one more time, sis. Pardon? Say your name for me one more time, please. Oh, it's Lady Baines. I mean, even... Lady Baines. Lady Baines. Good to hear from you, All Lady right. Baines. Give thanks, Let's sister. Do. For, Tupac for the went through it as well. I mean, uh, if he's touching a woman's button, which button is this supposed to be touching? Man's button? Come on! <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> All right. That's quite a subject, my Indeed. sister. Quite a subject, right? This one, the African woman's behind. Okay. We're not mm, going to, that's not, that's not our subject for this evening. Kings not a and subject queens. for another time. Yes, indeed. We'll, we'll get Mama Mar- Marimba Annie as an anthropologist to come on uh, and deal with that. <laughs> at point. You know what I mean? Um, okay. Right. We're going to have to lock off the um, the, the calls there. Can we get Sister Zaza to answer some yeah, of these we, we are. I'm questions? Just checking this. Um, this message sending spiritual sending a spiritual message. Oh, oh, all right. Let, 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 let's, let's, let's sort this out. But Sister Zaza, the, the, the um, brother William, I believe it was, was asking: Is there a war between the light-skinned African woman and the dark-skinned African woman? 
You know, I, I would say I wouldn't say I would say no, there's not a war between the light skin and black skin woman. I would say there is a war on the light skin, black, you know, light skin and dark skin, black woman. And it all is rooted in uh, self-hatred. You know, I always say that when you are completely confident within yourself, when you are when you've hit your stride, you know, when you're you're making moves and you're, you know, having successes and progress in your life and whatnot, you don't have time to be hating on somebody else or you don't have time to be looking at them and, and wishing that you look like them or, you know, or or having that feeling of envy and jealousy and whatnot because of the way that another person looks. Um, this whole idea of us copying European physical features is really something that we need to to take a good hard look at because if you really knew the power of blackness i'm talking about from a scientific like universal perspective indeed, indeed. If, you, if you knew that they are coating the space shuttles with carbon which is a, a variation of the same melanin that is in our skin in order for them to even leave the planet <laughs> you know they have to they need you you know, you can go in, in Walgreens and Walmart and see uh, melanin sunglasses. Mm. You know, you can you can purchase melatonin in drug pharmacies now. Mm. You know, you, there, there are so many different ways to show and prove that Europeans absolutely know that we are the people of the creator. They know that we are the first ones. If we understood the the, the science of melanin in the in the the the. Um, and melanin is not just based on a uh, uh, skin tone. And melanin is also measured from your internal organs yes, as well. Yes. So, you know, if we understood the power of blackness, the, the your ability to be in tune with nature and rhythm and and balance and, you know, all of the greatest things that the universe has to offer. There's no way you would be cutting and chiseling your face and trying to look other than yourself. You, you, you know, these sister Zaza, I'm really sorry to interrupt you, but. There is one may describe that there is a chasm that's being created between light skin and darker skin women. Then, yes, and, and I would could, agree with could you elaborate on that then, please? As to actually started back during slavery, right? This was, uh, you know, the idea that, uh, uh, of course, slave masters were raping uh, our women. Mm -hmm. Those women would conceive biracial children. Those children would, you know, be become a part of the plantation and would be slaves as well. Mm -hmm. um, they will receive certain favors from either the master or different other plantation owners. You know, a lot of times they would be used as concubines for other plantations on owner, plantation owners because they physically were more attracted to the mixed uh, looking female. Mm -hmm. So you have this concept now where, you know, we talk about this now, you know, the house slave versus the field slave. And uh, the house slave had it easier because she lived in the house opposed to, or he, he or she lived in the house opposed to the slave that worked in the field and lived in the shacks. So this was the start of, of, of this dysfunction. And then of course, people will talk about the Willie Lynch letter. You know, some people say it never existed. Some people say it did, but does the behavior exist? It's real. It's real. Willie Lynch is real. Exactly. Go so ahead, my sister. Say, okay, you know, people tell me, oh, you would have been a house slave. You know, you looked the part of the house slave. Okay, so that just means that, you know, uh, uh, and not to say that the life wasn't easier, because of course it was easier, but, you know, then you had to deal with a female devil in the household, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and potentially having sex with your father and potentially having sex with your physical, with your biological brother. I mm. mean, the, the amount of insanity that came with living on a plantation, whether you were full black or mixed black or house slave or field slave, like all of it was madness. It was all complete insanity. So I think we need to, you know, I, I hear that conversation is like, oh, you would have been in the house. You would have had an easier life. I would have still been a slave. That's it. That's it. That's the reality. That's the reality. So yes, to your question. Yes, there is a, 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 a schism, if you will, that is putting light skinned against dark skin and I feel a responsibility as a light skinned woman because people think I have this overwhelming amount of benefit in this society well it didn't help me when I was facing that judge mm -hmm. and facing that case when you know when they were coming at me that didn't mean anything to them they saw a black woman yes, you know yes. so I think for me it is important for me to embrace and elevate dark skinned beautiful black women 
Yeah. And I do it all the time. I do it in my interviews. I do it when I talk to sisters. I know that I have a responsibility to help them cultivate a, a, an aspect of self-love because I look the part, you know. But what you, how you look on the outside pales in comparison to Word. how you feel on the inside. Word. When I was young, I didn't like the way I looked. I wanted to be chocolate like the rest of my family. Right, you know, I right. felt some kind of way about that. So there's a lot of different layers to this. Mm-hmm. You know, where we have a lot of different unhappy, unfulfilled people who are basing themselves on how they look opposed to who they are at the core of their being. Wonderful. All right, Sister Zaza, we're, we're coming to the end well of our done, show. Well done, my sister. Excellent we're contribution. To, we're, we're coming to the end of our show, um, and we're going to get some closing words from you. Um, and also, if you could address this question from one of our listeners, how important is racial identity to African liberation? For, well, racial identity is extremely important to me. Like, I'm standing on the shoulders of, 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 of Africa, you know, I'm standing on the shoulders of of that great legacy and those great, you know, queens who fought off Europeans and who fought off rapists and who fought off, you know, all of these different uh, uh, dynamics that came in to destroy our people. I, I own that. You know, I love the creativity and the and the um, and the ingenuity and the and the proudness and the boldness and the humbleness and the just the quality of who we are as a people all around the world. I met an African brother yesterday uh, here in Oakland. I just was looking at him and, you know, he just he embodied Africa to me. And I just wanted to sit down and just and just soak that brother's wisdom up, Mm -hmm. you know. So I think that it's not a question of thinking that we are superior to anyone or thinking or or carrying walking around in arrogance. No, own your godliness. You've been kissed by the sun. (laughs) What's You've been kissed by the cosmos. You know, you are a special, beautiful, magnificent people. I'm wearing that everywhere I go. I wear the, the Adinkra symbols. I wear the Ankh. I wear the, the pride of, 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 of African history and African culture and what we are as black people and all of the black nations around the world. I'm owning that because I understand the power of it. And it takes us right back to the creator. Yes, indeed, my sister. Thank you very much for that answer right there. You will be able to hear more from Sister Zaza Ali as she delves into the issue of black male-female relationships, kings and queens at Africa Liberation Day, the 29th and the 30th of May in Birmingham at the St. George's Community Hub, Great Hampton Row, Newington, Birmingham, B193 JG. So this is not the London one, Kings and Queens, this is the Birmingham one. For more information, Google Pan African Congress Movement UK or you can and you'll find the Pan African Congress Movement website uh, and you'll be able to interact with them uh and come down to AOD. Sister Zaza, we never got to go into the, the commercialization of consciousness. So you might be able to get we might have to get you back. Uh, at some point for that. Part two, part uh, two. Sister Queen. I, uh, I'd love to come back and join you again. And uh, let me give my, my website is www.zazaali.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook at Zaza Ali as well. Um, those are my main, you know, social media networks. Um, I'm on YouTube as well. You can just YouTube me, uh, Zaza Ali 007. Uh, and let's stay connected. And I would be honored to come back and, and build with you brothers anytime. Um, nice please keep up the good work. Know nice and understand that your voice and your energy and your presence is extremely needed for our people. Our people need guidance and our people need the energy and the essence of what you present. So I'm honored to be here with you. And thank you so much for having me. Give that sister. It's been a pleasure, please, my please, sister, please engaging with you. And thank you for all the, 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 the text that was messaged in about the reparations march on uh, the first of Mazaya. Don't worry, we're going to be coming back to that at some point uh, and giving information. Unfortunately, we've run completely out of time. And uh, next up, we have uh, brother SG Vibes, and we don't want to want to take liberties with the man's time. But brothers and sisters, on the commercialization of consciousness, I'd like to reiterate that you can come down to uh, our normal session on the twenty seventh of May, where we will be addressing information. Uh, looking at consciousness in relation to the work of our sister Beyonce information and sorry formation and lemon a this has been Africa speaks with our Kebalan on Galaxy Radio uh, the big G tune in next week as we continue to talk it straight and make it a plane this show is 